What we need what is not more, more medication, but more education, because the best prescription is knowledge. This is Exposé, coming to you live from Lagos, Nigeria, every Monday on Instagram, YouTube and Facebook simultaneously. I'm the regular host, Tony Akiya. Don't forget, don't forget. What we need what is we not need more, medication, more medication, but more but education, more education, because the best prescription is knowledge. Hello and welcome once again to Expose with Tony Akinyemi. Don't forget, what we need is not more medication, but more education. I hope you have been educated regarding light therapy so far. I know many of you are already aware, many of you were familiar before I started talking about this, but I know that quite a number of you are probably hearing this for the first time, that light can actually be used therapeutically and even prophylactically. In other words, appropriate use of light energy can be deployed to prevent disease on the one hand or even to treat diseases and reverse diseases on the other hand. And so far we've talked about blue light and we're currently talking about red light. But we have mentioned five different types of bioactive lights. We talked about the ultraviolet ray of the sun. We talked about blue light, which can come from the sun or from artificial light. We've talked about red light. We talked about near infrared light. And we talked about far infrared light. And then we went ahead to look at the benefit of the light that emanates from the sun. The sun in the sky was put there by God to serve a myriad of purposes, many, many wonderful purposes. Uh, the one that many of us are aware of is how plants utilize light energy for photosynthesis to produce food for us. Uh, and many people have thought that only plants actually need light, you know, to do what they were created to do. But far from it, human beings as well as animals also need light, light energy. A lot of different kinds of energy emanates from the sun, okay? Um, we have thermal energy, which is the heat that the sun produces. We have luminous energy, which is the illumination or the light that comes from the sun. Both the light and the heat can provide some therapy for us as humans. And you will notice that different parts of the world have different amounts of sunshine in the course of the year. I live in the tropics. In the tropical world, we have sunshine 12 months of the year. Aren't we really blessed? Of course, others in other regions of the world are equally blessed, but I'm talking about in relation to sunshine. The tropical uh, regions of the world have abundance of sunshine. And how I wish that our political leaders in particular would you know, be able to help the population to harness the immense resources that the sun provides. It can be a source of energy. We all are aware of solar power, okay? The sun can be a source of uh, drying our stuff for preservation. You can dry your produce. You can dry fruits. You can dry root vegetables like cassava, like yam. You can dry fruits like, you know, plantain and different kinds of things so that the, the shelf life can be extended, so they can be preserved for later use. The sun can be used to dry our clothes instead of paying a lot of electricity bill in your dryer. Okay, you have your washing machine, you wash your clothes, and then you use electricity to dry it again. When the sun is out there and it can do the drying for you without having to charge anything or pay any invoice at the end of the day. 
the sun has so many therapeutic effects that we have been highlighting. Now, I want to talk today about the melanin pigment that those of us, people of color, have on our skin. Now, what makes my skin this color is called melanin. That's the pigment on my skin. Now, melanin is that pigment that makes our skins to differ in color from one person to the other. The amount of melanin on my skin the, uh, in, in relation to the amount of melanin on your skin will determine whether you are fair-skinned or dark-skinned, as the case may be, okay? So melanin pigmentation is that color on the skin. Now, what does melanin do? Melanin protects our skins from the damaging effects of the ultraviolet rays of the sun. So those who have melanin pigment on their skin, they are actually designed to function under the sun for longer periods without any damage. That's why you find people in Africa, particularly West Africa, where there's 12 months of sunshine in a year, you find bus conductors, you find artisans, you find all kinds of people. They function under the sun all day and they don't develop problems. They don't develop skin cancer. They don't develop anything because of the melanin pigment that protects them. But Caucasians, people who don't have melanin protection, cannot afford to stay under the sun, particularly under the hot sun, when the thermal energy of the sun is unleashed, they will get sunburn. And when they get sunburn, that can lead to lesions, that can lead to skin cancer, all kinds of problems, okay? Now, so, we are going to be looking today at the melanin pigment on the one hand, and then we are going to be looking at the role that nutrition plays in preventing sunburn the role that nutrition plays in protecting our skin from the ultraviolet rays of the sun. Don't forget that I am also a nutritionist, and that's why I'm bringing this dimension. So melanin, the pigment on our skin, is actually to protect us from the damaging effects of ultraviolet rays of the sun. So it prevents sunburn. That's why we don't get sunburned here. In Nigeria, even though we spend almost all our day, most of us, under the sun. So let's look at the relationship between our nutrients and sunburn. And I want those who are Caucasian in particular, or very fair-skinned, to listen to this very well. You see, many nutrients promote the healing of burns on the one hand. Okay, They can also prevent sunburn in the first place. Now, this suggests that a diet that is rich in these nutrients may actually be helpful in preventing sunburn. And this will create exactly the situation that the popular Dr. Johanna Bodwick describes as a greater tolerance for sunlight. So there are certain foods you can begin to eat regularly, and the phytonutrients, phyto is the Greek word for plant, so when we talk about phytonutrients or phytochemicals, we are talking about nutrients from plants or chemicals from plants, all right? So uh, there are certain nutrients from plants sources, some of them from animal sources, that are actually going to fortify your body so that it can prevent sunburn even when you get exposed to heavy amounts of sunshine, okay? Such nutrients will include things like carrots, Yes, good old carrots. Carrots and other vegetables and fruits that are very high in beta carotene. Now, beta carotene, uh, the body converts to vitamin A. The body can also use it directly as beta carotene, which serves as an antioxidant. All right. There are fruits and vegetables that are either orange in color or yellow in color. Such fruits and vegetables are high in beta carotene. And fruits that are high in beta carotene typically help us, you know, to fortify our system so that we are able to, you know, protect ourselves from um, sunburn and such other skin damages that can happen when we are exposed to sunshine. Now, uh, let me ask a very important question. I know some of you already have an opinion, but let's reason together. 
Okay, does sunlight cause skin cancer? Yeah, I want to know your answer. Just keep your answer in your left hand. And when we are done with this discussion, I may ask you that same question again. Does sunlight cause skin cancer? Now, generally, many believe that sunlight causes skin cancer. Now, this common assumption calls for urgent review. Why? You see, because the deadliest of skin cancers is called melanoma. Melanoma. And it does not appear to be caused by sun exposure, incidentally. Okay? Now, the incidence of melanoma, type of skin cancer, is five times higher in northern Scotland. Listen to me again. The incidence of melanoma, a type of skin cancer, is five times higher in northern Scotland. You see, that is where there is far less sun exposure than in the Mediterranean islands, okay, where they have more sunshine exposure than in Scotland. Okay, in fact, it is being suggested in some quarters that sunshine might actually even protect against melanoma. Now, there was a paper that was published in uh, Family Practice News in the year 1996. Family Practice News, 1996. On page 21, there was an article written titled, Sunlight May Protect Against Cancers and Melanoma. Sunlight May Protect Against Cancers and Melanoma. That was by Gregory Maltz. Now, so it was reported also on page 915, volume 346 of The Lancet in the year 1995. Now, The Lancet is one of the, uh, probably one of the top three, you know, reputable international medical journals in the world. You have the North, I mean, New England Journal of Medicine, NEJM. You have the British Journal of Medicine, BJM, and then you have the Lancet. Now, these are the top three international reputable medical journals respected by international scientists, by doctors, by, you know, researchers and what have you. In 1995, in volume 346 of The Lancet, on page 915, under the title, Melanoma and Sun Exposure, it was reported that sunshine is probably not the cause of melanoma. Because in Japan, it is said that 40% of melanomas occur on the soles of the feet, under people's feet. Now, so if 40% of melanoma skin cancer occurs on the soles of the feet in Japan, one, Japanese are not known to sunbathe like Americans. Now, even if they do, they obviously do not do so with the soles of their feet pointed towards the sky <laughs> so that the sun can beat the soles of their feet and then develop skin cancer. No. Now, Dr. Res Russell, a medical doctor and the author of the book, What the Bible Says About Healthy Living. He authored the book, What the Bible Says About Healthy Living. Dr. Rex Russell, he believes that poor nutrition is actually what renders the skin more vulnerable to sun-induced damage. Now, I want you to listen to the balance of what I'm saying. The sun can actually damage the skin. There's no doubt about that. Okay? There can be sunburn that can lead to sun I mean, skin lesions that can develop and go on to become skin cancers. But the question is, is it the sun that is to blame for the burn and for the ultimate development of skin cancer or whatever else it develops? Or is it the texture of the skin that is not able to withstand the rays of the sun? Which of the two is to blame? Now, Dr. Rex Russell believes that if your skin is well fortified, it shouldn't suffer any damage from the sun, even when exposed to the sun. So the sun is not primarily to blame. The sun only causes the damage because your skin was vulnerable 
to sun-induced damage. If your skin were to be fortified and not vulnerable to skin damage, then there wouldn't be sunburn in the first place. So it has been established categorically that there's actually no association between melanoma and ultraviolet exposure. Now, that may come as a big surprise to many. Now, I'm going to quote from the European Journal of Cancer, again in the year 2005, in September. It was published in that uh, medical journal that uh, the authors actually found some bed use was associated with a small decreased risk, not increased risk, decreased risk for melanoma. They also found that sunbathing and sunburns were not associated with melanoma. Fair skin and the number of moles were the major risk factor for melanoma. Not sunbeds, not sunshine. They even found some evidence of decreasing risk with increasing sunbed use, concluding in that paper that they observed, I quote now, the observed decrease in risk of melanoma with increasing use of sunbeds suggest either a protective effect or could be explained by recall bias with cases under-reporting their true exposure. European Journal of Cancer, September 2005. Now, according to the February 2006 newsletter of the Vitamin D Council, it was said that a large multicenter European study, perhaps the best study ever done on the subject, found this, and I quote, they found no association between melanoma and risk factors related to ultraviolet exposure, such as sunbed use, sunbathing, or number of weeks of holidays in sunny areas. Now, these are all in the public domain, and these are uh, papers and articles and publications that everybody can access. I mean, as far back as the 1990s, they've been making these studies and finding no association whatsoever. All right, so uh, I'm going to go on a short break at this point, and then when we come back, we will continue this conversation, and then we're going to uh, look at precisely what are those nutrients that we can use to fortify our skin so that even when we get exposed to sunshine, we don't get sunburnt and we don't get skin cancer, All right? Uh, and that will also uh, make us understand the role that what God has already given us plays in protecting us, which is our melanin pigment. Some people, unfortunately, don't know what the color of their skin does for them, so they go bleaching. They bleach off the protection that God has given to them, thereby making themselves susceptible to developing skin disorders, terrible skin disorders, just because in their stupidity and foolishness, they removed, or should I say in their ignorance, they removed the very protection that God gave them to thrive and to survive in tropical regions of the world. Don't go away. I'll be back shortly. Introducing MK. Healthy Newsletters on various health topics by Reverend Tony Akiyemi. Order, call, plus 
actually, I've been uh, listening to Reverend Tony for some time now. And I came to know about Reverend Tony from a local uh, radio station. And I was so blessed just by hearing him talk on radio. So I was like, ah, I really want to know this person. Ah, he talks. Because at one point, there was something yearning in me. But I really could not define it. I didn't know what I really needed. But now, when I heard him, I was like, ah, that's what I need. I want to tell you, it's so wonderful. I've just seen, you know, just the, 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 the people around and just how friendly they are. And also, not just meeting the people, but the knowledge just by interacting with one another has been another training on its own. So, and uh, the lectures and everything, I remember uh, I was just talking with a doctor friend. He was like, ah, this is your thing. Eh? The way the thing is taking you, this one, you're going right to Nigeria just for... I said, ah, he doesn't know what, uh, what I'm actually learning here. So I really want to thank Reverend Tony. I want to thank the Rafa Institute of Healthy Living. Welcome back. This is Expose brought to you by the Shepherd's Flock International Church. And I'm your regular host, Tony Akinyemi. Now, we've been talking about nutrients and sunburn on the one hand. And then we ask the question, does sunshine cause skin cancer? Now, so let me start with nutrients and sunburn in this second part. Now, many nutrients promote either the healing of burns that have already taken place, sunburn, or prevent sunburn from taking place when you sunbathe, okay, or when you walk under the sun, suggesting that a rich diet in these nutrients may actually be helpful in both ways, for prevention and for treatment. Now, this will create exactly the situation that I mentioned earlier in the first part. Dr. Johanna Bodwig was a German scientist who developed what we now know as the Budwig diet, B-U-D-W-I-G, Budwig diet. Now, Dr. Budwig described in some of his publications what she called a greater tolerance for sunlight. Certain nutrients that when you include them in your diet, they increase your tolerance for sunlight. They give you a greater tolerance for uh, being able to withstand the ultraviolet rays of the sun. And such nutrients include, number one, foods that are high in the substance known as astaxanthin. Astaxanthin, A-S-T-A-X-A-N-T-H-I-N. Now, astaxanthin. Now, the one that readily comes to mind, that is, very rich in azazantin is the fish, salmon. Now, of course, you know that salmon is very tasty. Salmon is also very expensive, by the way. And, and there are different kinds of salmon, <laughs> the fish, salmon. There is the wild-caught salmon, and there is also, you know, commercially raised salmon. They now raise salmon in pools, you know, at home. You know, agriculturists, fish scientists actually raise salmon. Now, the commercially raised salmon is not rich in astaxanthin, neither is it even rich in the kind of omega-3 that you want. Now, salmon is usually pink in color, all right? And sometimes they feed the commercially raised ones, they feed them with dye, D-Y-E, color, so that their meat, the fish, will be pink in color. But it's not really the, the kind of carotene that you're looking for, the kind of nutrient you're looking for. It is just dye that you find in those ones. But the wild caught salmon in the wild waters, okay, out there in the wild, those ones are very rich in omega-3, very rich in astaxanthin, which can help to protect your skin against sunburn. Now, another food that is rich in substances that can fortify our skin against sunburn is beta carotene. Now, beta carotene is found in fruits and vegetables that have orange color. Orange colored fruits and vegetables or yellow colored fruits and vegetables. I normally joke with people and I ask them, which 
vegetable is more orange than orange? Of course, the answer is carrot. Carrot is orange colored, even though it's not called orange. The color of carrot is orange, okay? Uh, some oranges out there don't even have orange color, by the way. <laughs> but we call them orange all the same. So any fruit, any vegetable that has an orange color or yellow color is very likely, in all probability, high in beta carotenes. Now, all of those orange colored and yellow colored fruits and vegetables will protect your skin against sunburn. All right? And then we have foods that are high in lycopene. L-Y-C-O-P-E-N-E. -E. Lycopene is found in fruits and vegetables that are red in color. You see, uh, in one of my previous episodes, I think I talked about the color code. That if you know the color of a fruit or a vegetable, just by the color, you can profile the fruit and vegetable and guess the kind of nutrients you're likely going to find in them just by the color code. So anything yellow, anything orange, you know that there will be beta carotene. Anything green, you know there will likely be magnesium, there will be uh, folic acid and something like that. So anything that is also uh, white in color, such as cauliflower, you know it's going to contain things like indole 3 cabinol, and what have you. So beta carotene is found in yellow, orange colored fruits and vegetables. And then lycopene is found in red colored fruits and vegetables, such as tomatoes and watermelon. Okay, they are rich in lycopene. In fact, it is lycopene that makes them red. All right, and so when you eat fruits that are rich in lycopene, you are actually improving your tolerance to the sun. You are able to tolerate the sun more, more. So when you see people who don't eat fruits, who don't eat vegetables, that, that's why I tell people to eat the rainbow. Eat food that is rich in all the colors. So you get all the benefits from all the colors. Eat something red, something orange, something yellow, something green, something indigo, something violet, something blue, okay? When you eat all the colors, you are getting all the fortification you need to protect yourself against the effect of the ultraviolet rays of the sun in causing skin damage. Now, so eat a lot of tomatoes. Now, tomatoes that contain lycopene, does not just, tomatoes don't just serve to protect against the sun. Tomatoes also serve to protect the prostate in men. Lycopene also has a prostate protective effect. So men should be generous in eating tomatoes, either tomato juice or slicing tomato into your salad or slicing it on your food and eating it one way or the other. The good thing about tomato and carrots, by the way, is that when you eat them raw, you get a certain set of benefits. When you cook them, you get another set of benefits. So either way, they are beneficial. Whether you take them raw or you eat them cooked, they still confer very tremendous health benefits at the end of the day. Now, another nutrient that has protection for our skin is omega-3 oils. Omega-3 oils. That is found in flaxseed, it's found in flaxseed oil, it's found in fish oil, in cod liver oil, in krill oil, in hemp seed oil, and what have you. Omega-3 oil actually helps your skin to glow. Your skin glows and it protects your skin against the ultraviolet rays of the sun. So we tell people, we say, don't wear your sunscreen. Eat it. Eat your sunscreen. Don't wear it. You know, people who want to protect themselves from sunburn, they buy this chemical, you know, chemical loaded screen, you know, lotion that they call sunscreen. You know, they, they put it on their skin, then they go sunbathing in the hope that it will protect them from the ultraviolet rays of the sun. Well, I suggest that rather than wearing your sunscreen, you should rather eat your sunscreen. So what is this sunscreen I'm suggesting you should eat? Definitely not the chemical lotion you buy in the pharmacy or out there in the store. I'm not talking about that. Please don't eat that one. 
It could be very toxic, very deadly. <laughs> it's not meant for consumption. But what I mean by eating your sunscreen is eating the foods that will serve to protect your skin from ultraviolet ray induced damage when you get exposed to sunshine. So how do you eat your sunscreen? By loading yourself on the following. Number one, I've mentioned some of them before, carrot is on the list, particularly carrot juice. Juice carrot and drink carrot juice, you know, can take three glasses a day, one glass in the morning, one in the afternoon, one in the evening, 30 minutes before your meals. You know, those who are Caucasian, when they take a lot of carrot juice, they begin to actually see the bitter carotene, the orange color of the carrot begins to show up on their skin after drinking carrot juice for a long while. And that's highly protective. That means that your skin is now protected from sunburn. So carrots and other orange colored foods, eat a lot of them. That's how to eat your sunscreen. Number two, eat a lot of flax seeds, flax seed oil, chia seeds, fish oil, cod liver oil, krill oil, and what have you. Hemp seed oil, all of them are omega-3 rich oil. And you can take a lot of uh, what Dr. Johanna Bodwig called the Bodwig diet, that is cottage cheese mixed with flaxseed or flaxseed oil. Cottage cheese with flaxseed oil and some ground flaxseed. You can actually add some fruits. You can add some berries, you can add pineapple and things like that and make it part of your you know, daily regimen. That makes your skin to glow. It also protects your skin against sunburn. And by the way, it also helps this, the membrane fluidity of your cell membranes so that nutrients are better able to go into your cells, particularly glucose, and then waste products are able to go out of your cell easily for detoxification. So that is the omega-3 oils. Now, the third category of food that you eat to fortify your skin are the nuts, like almonds, like coconut and coconut oil. Some people think that coconut oil will increase their cholesterol. Far from the truth, coconut oil will not increase your cholesterol level. Coconut milk and coconut itself will not increase your cholesterol, okay? It is medium chain triglycerides, all right? And it's highly beneficial for you. It also protects your skin, all right? And then the cruciferous vegetables, another way to eat your sunscreen. Broccoli, cauliflower, kale, uh, Brussels sprouts, all these vegetables are cruciferous vegetables. They also fortify your skin against sun-induced skin damage. Then green leafy vegetables, all green leafy vegetables have a protective effect for your skin so that when you go under the sun, your skin is not damaged. And then what about sweet potatoes? I love sweet potatoes. And in fact, uh, sweet potatoes are also compatible with diabetics. Some people wonder, how can I eat sweet potato when I'm diabetic? The thing is sweet. Is it not going to elevate my blood sugar? No, it's not going to ele elevate your blood sugar. You can try it out. Sweet potato eating moderately. Of course, you have to eat your vegetable salad before you eat the sweet potato and very moderately too. And don't fry it, okay? You can bake it or you can boil it, all right? I prefer the baking. Okay, so that no nutrient leaches from the vegetable. All the phytonutrients are present in there. Now, somebody asked me the other day, he said, but uh, what makes sweet potato sweet? Is it not sugar? Is it not going to make my blood sugar go up? And then the question followed, what makes stevia sweet? And yet, stevia is almost zero calories, and it is sweet. So what makes it sweet? Now, I, I have not done a lot of research on sweet potato to know that, but from my residual knowledge, I can say that there are certain carbohydrates, okay, that have that sweet taste, but they are indigestible by the body, and so they are not absorbed into our bloodstream. So when we eat them in our mouth, they taste sweet, yeah, when they get inside, they don't get absorbed into the bloodstream, so they don't elevate our blood sugar, okay? That's why you can take sweet things like stevia, and yet your blood sugar doesn't go up. And I believe also sweet potato may fall into that category. Why? It is sweet, yet it does not elevate your blood sugar, and it still offers you that protection against sunburn. And then I've talked about tomatoes, but let me also talk about pomegranates, 
okay, and other red fruits. All of these are your sunscreen diet. Eat your sunscreen and it protects you against sunburn. What about green tea? Green tea, matcha green tea in particular. I'm going to come to that and talk more in more details about green tea as a protective tea with very beneficial phytonutrients, uh, EC, ECGC, I think, e e ECGC, that's the name of the uh, phytonutrients in green tea that actually offers very beautiful protection against uh, sunburn. We also have berries, particularly blueberries. Blueberries are very wonderful in protecting us against uh, uh, sunburn. Okay, so eat your blueberry and that helps you a lot. Uh, you can add your blueberry to different things. You can add it to your smoothie. You can add it to uh, your fruit salad. You can add uh, your blueberry to a number of different, you know, different recipes and that can help you actually to take in a lot of blueberry into your diet. Now let's come to herbal teas, particularly green tea. Herbal teas that protect us against ultraviolet light. Now there is black tea, there is white tea, and there are green teas. All of them are high in two major substances. The, 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 the substances are flavonoids. They are, they are high in two flavonoids that can protect your skin from ultraviolet rays of the sun. The two flavonoids are polyphenols and catechins. Polyphenols, catechins. These are two flavonoids that are found in green tea that are highly protective. Now, green tea, however, is the most effective, containing high amounts of the most powerful polyphenol that there is. It's called EGCG, EGCG. Uh, for short, that's the easiest way to call it. The full pronunciation can be, you know, jaw-breaking. It's actually epigallocatechin 3 gallate Epigallocatechin 3 gallate or EGCG for short. Just call it EGCG. Now, green tea is high in EGCG, which is good in protecting your skin and protecting against skin cancer. And they even use it as part of the protocol in addressing other cancers. Now, there's a particular type of green tea known as matcha green tea, matcha, M-A-T-C-H-A. Matcha green tea is a very bright powdered green tea, and it's even better. A study that was conducted by the University of Colorado in the United States found that the amount of EGCG in matcha tea was actually at least three times higher than the largest literature value of other types of green teas. There are those that actually have 16 times higher than other forms of green teas. So I suggest very strongly that you go for matcha green tea regularly. Now, so we come back to the question as I begin to round up. Does sunlight cause skin cancer? Again, we have said that many people believe it does, but we have looked at various publications you know, in reputable journals and by world-class scientists that have already told us that not necessarily so. There may not really be any association between sunshine and melanoma. All right. So Dr. Robert uh, M. Shelton has done a great work, you know, in looking at the effect of sunshine on our body. And he says, and I quote, in medical circles, sunbathing is blamed for skin cancer. The evidence of this or for this is very weak, according to Dr. Uh, Robert M. Shelton. He says, repeated burning and hab habitual overexposure may help to develop cancer, but what has, what has this to do with intelligent sunbathing? That when you do intelligent sunbathing, you don't get sunburnt. And when you eat nutrients as your sunscreen, you don't get sunburnt. Now, so during summer, for those who live in temperate regions of the world, the liver makes a lot of vitamin D and stores it. Okay, the body makes vitamin D, stores it in the liver during summer months, and then these are deployed for the body to use during the winter months. So when you are in summer, take advantage of the sun over there, get your sensible sunshine exposure. You see, 
Vitamin D comes in about two different distinct, uh, two distinct chemical forms. It comes as vitamin D2 and vitamin D3. Vitamin D2 is what the body, you know, when the, sun is when the body is exposed to the sun, you know, the sun exposure will convert the excess cholesterol reserves in our body, okay, into vitamin D2, which is now later converted to vitamin D3 in our liver, all right, and stored there for later use. Now, vitamin D3 is the form that the human body can use in high doses without worrying about hepatoxicity, liver toxicity, okay? Some animals, especially fish, also make a lot of vitamin D and they store it in their liver. That's why when you take cod liver oil, for example, you also get vitamin D from fish. Now, so if you are taking vitamin D supplement, make sure it is vitamin D3 because that's the form that your body uh, can use very easily without being toxic to your liver. Now, vitamin D2, however, is usually the synthetic form that is used to fortify our food, our grains, our cereals, and what have you. If you take that one in too much of an amount, that may have some implications. So if you are taking vitamin D3 supplement, then make sure, I mean, if you are taking vitamin D supplement, rather, make sure it is vitamin D3 and not vitamin D2. All right. This is how far we can go today because I've received signals that our time is up. And... Um, Next episode, by the grace of God, we should be bringing our discussion on light therapy to a close, and then we'll be looking at some expert opinions about sunshine exposure. I'll be emphasizing particularly the work of Dr. Robert Shelton, where he provides a lot of insight to the risks and the benefits of sunshine, particularly when we do sensible sunshine light therapy. Thank you for spending your time with me this Monday evening. Don't forget what we need is not more medication, but more education. And the best prescription is knowledge. When you are informed, your life gets transformed. But when you are uninformed, your life gets deformed. So get the necessary information for your transformation. That's why the Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Proverbs 4, 7, get understanding. Thank you once again. Have a glorious week ahead of you. God bless you. We'll see you same time, same platform next week. By the grace of God. Bye-bye. Introducing MK. Healthy Newsletters on various health topics by Rev. Tony Akiyemi. Order, call, plus 234-90-732-92100.